Hi, everybody. This is Barry. Let's talk about exercise three going a little beyond the speaker notes. Uh, an image of somebody walking up steps. Subconscious reminder to students, hopefully. So this is a high concept exercise. We have two students. We'll call them Jane and David. And all right, here's the high concept. They're about the same age as our students, and they have the same educational level and work experience as the students. However, Jane and David have never seen toothbrushes or toothpaste before. Yes, kind of a weird idea. But more importantly, Jane and David have never ever seen brushes or tubes of any kind before. And the student's quest is to write instructions telling Jane or David how to get toothpaste on a toothbrush. Important, don't get students to explain how to brush teeth. That's a much more sophisticated, much trickier uh, set of uh, steps. All right, so your students, some of them are gonna be puzzled. Wait, they've never seen a toothbrush or toothpaste before? They've never seen a tube or a gel before? Yeah, they haven't seen anything like this before. So this exercise really requires students getting into the mindset of somebody who is completely new to a particular task or a particular idea. They'll work on this for a while. You want to give them more time on this than you've given them in the previous two exercises, a lot more time. Eventually, though, it will be time for students to talk over their list, their answers, with their partner. And what I sometimes tell students during this at the, at the beginning, hey, once you act out, pretend you're Jane or David and act out what your partner has written. And in the live class version, you can, you can see students squeezing imaginary tubes onto imaginary toothbrushes and telling their partner, hey, I, I think you might need three hands in order to do these directions. I have often heard a lot of giggling uh, during this partner discussion. It's a fun exercise. Then you know, reconvene the class. As always, this first slide, you can enjoy the speaker notes talking about the modern history of lists or skip over it. And then you get into possible answers. Now, I sometimes like to ask my class, how many of you had at least one list in your answer? And hopefully most of your students will say, yeah, yeah, I, I had a list that showed the directions for how to get the toothpaste on the toothbrush. The really excellent students might have two lists in their answer. That first list is a glossary of sorts explaining what the different terms are for Jane or David. Poor Jane and David have never seen these items before. And the answer given here on the slide is imperfect. You might ask students to critique what is shown as a possible answer. Yeah, that's fair game too. And then we go to a class discussion. And this class discussion is all in service of getting the students to recognize that they don't always have to write paragraphs, that oftentimes in technical communication, a list is better than a paragraph. And hopefully students will begin to break the habit of always going to paragraphs. At any rate, that, my friends, is exercise three. And I hope you have a lot of fun with it because the students generally do.